Hello, Night Nation. I'm Trace Rilko from the Sons of UCF, joined by Eric Lopez of the Black and Gold Banner. Welcome to Around the Kingdom. Elo, hello to you. Hello, Trace. Coming up on the fastest UCF show around, Johnny Dawkins reports extended. What does that mean for UCF basketball and Coach Dawkins? Uh, just discuss that. Football practice. What do we want to know about UCF football? Baseball stock up? Softball in trouble? All coming up, we'll discuss on the fastest UCF show around the kingdom. That is right, Elo. Before we get going, let's welcome in the third member of our team, Adam Eaton from the Sons of UCF. Keeps an eye on the clock, keeps us on our toes. Adam, hello. Gentlemen, rumors of my demise are exaggerated, much like Johnny Dawkins. I'm back. You can't get rid of me. <laughs> Good to see you, Adam. I will check back with you shortly. You mentioned it off the top, Elo, as we record on a Tuesday night. All sorts of news breaking from the usual suspects uh, in the basketball media, John Rothstein, Jeff Goodman, amongst others, that Terry Mahodger has uh, offered Johnny Dawkins, UCF men's basketball head coach, a contract extension. Now, offered and signed, and there will be more details that come out. Uh, it's been a week since UCF was ousted from the NIT first round by their rivals over in Tampa, the South Florida Bulls. So what do you make of this? Are you surprised that it's taken this long for this news to come out? No, I think the longer this went out, the more likely I think everybody kind of figured he was going to stay. Now, it says on the reports they're finalizing things, so maybe that's why it's worded the way it is because there's still a couple things to cross off and dot the I's. But honestly, this was a no-brainer move. I think if this is the right move if you're Terry Mahajer and UCF, the questions, obviously, there'll be a lot of questions once this, if this does indeed come true and it's official, is obviously some details and what this means for the resource. But it was interesting, as reports came out of this, we saw a post from the kingdom uh, supporting the finances behind Coach Dawkins and UCF basketball. So all signs pulled in the right direction. I think this was a right move. Uh, you've just had a great season in your year one in the Big 12, and I think it's a no-brainer for both, both parties from that standpoint. You mentioned, as did the others, that uh, more details to come. But, hey, we might not learn more details. We haven't learned a whole lot about Gus Malzahn's extension with UCF. UCF Athletics shielding itself from Freedom of Information Act requests. And so they may not release more. If you were AD, Terry Modger, how long would you extend Johnny Dawkins' reported that he had one more year remaining on his existing contract? Of course, that's back-to-back -back NIT appearances for UCF, 7-11 yeah. in the first year of the Big 12. What would you have extended him? Uh, we may not get a clear answer from UCF on that. No, that's a valid point. Well, I think this, let's let's address the, some of the scenarios. Number one, he was never going to coach in a lame duck. Anybody that suggested that doesn't know how this works in the industry. He was never going to be a lame duck coach. So I, I think the question is, I think it's probably no less than three years. I think it's probably anywhere from three to five years. You have to give security to the coaches. you got to give them time to build. Now give them an opportunity to recruit as a member of the Big 12 with potentially more resources. Uh, I think it's the right move. And it's time, Trace. You're a modest person. So I know you will not take part in this, but I am not as – I'm more petty than you are. You and I were 100% correct on this. We nailed this. And I think the people out there that were going after Trace, forget me, I understand people have my are critics of me. They can mock my art columns all you want. But Trace is a man that you knew, a lot of you, you know who you are, owe an apology because he got this right 100%. You didn't. So I expect the next time you see Trace on Around the Kingdom and on Suns Live <laughs> that a lot of you apologize publicly and say, Trace, you were right. That's what I want. That's my declaration. <laughs> well, I'm not going to hold my breath about any of that, Elo, but it uh, looks like Johnny Dawkins going to be here <gasps> a little while longer. I asked Ben Hazel on Sons of UCF Lives, uh, Alive, the former UCF development coach, uh, uh, how, is it NCAA tournament or bust for Johnny Dawkins? He said, hey, whoa, in year two. What do you say? What's a reasonable expectation? No, no way. No way. No. Stop. Arizona, Utah, Arizona State, Colorado are joining the Big 12 next year. Again, try. good luck trying to crack the top 10. It's going to take time to build. We don't even know what the roster looks like. We can make theories of who might come back and all that, but you know this, the transfer portal, come take it and give it. So we'll see what the roster looks like. But no, this program hasn't earned it. It's it's hard to make the tournament from this league. I think we've seen that. Uh, you could shoot for that. But no, he's not on a hot seat. I agree with Ben on that. Yeah, that's going to be a topic of much discussion. Shifting gears 
spring camp resumed for UCF. They were on spring break along with the rest of UCF student body last week. Elo, what's something you wish you could know uh, from UCF coaches that they might not tell you? What's a burning question that you might have as UCF continues with its spring camp? Yes, folks, Trace took that question from me. He's fired up because he wants my opinion on the football side first. I want to know how the defensive players look like. Do we have better athletes? Do we have better linebackers? Do What is the scheme looking like under Ted Roof? I think that's the question. I don't know. We're not going to know, right? Everybody's going to tell us everything's great, but we're not going to see anything, right, Trace? You're there all the time. We're just going to have to depend on whatever footage you get, Trace. No pressure. It's all on you. Like, it's all you. So how do these defensive players look like, especially in the linebacking position? Or have we upgraded there? We got a lot of new faces. I think that's what I want to know. Well, that question was asked during the media availability of Nikai Martinez uh, as well to Marty Henderson. And they said more aggressive on defense, going after the quarterback more. Of course, you got to have the athletes to do that. And UCF has had an upgrade in talent uh, in the recruiting and also the portal. So uh, my question, Elo, would be something that Gus Malzahn was asked about. Of course, he didn't say anything, was about special teams. Uh, that's very key, right? And very important. We saw what happened to Colton Boomer down the stretch of the season. Uh, you know, he can practice all he wants during spring, fall, but until he's in an actual game situation, we're going to not, we're not going to know whether he's gotten over what has been a bit of a shaky performance there towards the end of the 2023 season. Clearly you read my black and gold banner article. And I talked about the five biggest uh, things to look for in the spring game, the kicking game. I agree. That's a valid point mm -hmm. on that. By the way, nothing against the answers. I'm sure there were honest answers and everything, but we want to put more pressure on the quarterback. Isn't that what everybody always says on the defense? It's kind of like, hey, what do you want to see from your offense? Oh, we're going to be more vertical, deep passing. Game. Isn't that like the cliche answer? That's just me. I don't know. I think you got to <laughs> I think you've been playing. Dismissive. Do you think, by the way, the spring game, Colton Boomer, let's say he has a, a strong performance in that spring game. Do you think that shakes things off or – does it need to be in an actual game situation in the fall? Oh, uh, you know, I think game situations are always different than practice, but this is going to go all the way to fall. You know, that. they're not going to announce anything until fall, in my opinion. Let them kick it out. We'll see what happens. Some of these players we're talking about are hoping eventually to go to a Big 12 Pro Day. Yeah, Pro Days in Frisco, Texas. You know, when I think of Pro Days, I think of Frisco, Texas. Personally, 137 Big 12 players out there, including 17 UCF players. Trace, which? Former UCF Knight players have the most NFL upside, in your opinion. Well, I think it's the names we're hearing, right? Uh, and Javon Baker and Tylen Grable that did well at the Combine. But 17 UCF players are getting a good trip to Frisco, Texas in a couple of days at uh, Jerry's World. I mean, there's some guys on this list. I, I wish them all the best no matter where they end up and what they do, but uh, they didn't make the biggest impacts while they were UCF Knights. Could they possibly turn heads uh, at the pro days, uh, the Big 12's made-for-TV event there in Frisco, Texas? Uh, Elo, uh, Zach Marsh, Wojan, the tight end, and, and the other names here, Sean Peterson Jr., uh, to Jordan Mask. To, I mean, are these guys really going to make that big an impact uh, to catch NFL scouts? Nah, nah, I don't know about all that. I, I tend to agree. It's Baker, wide receiver. People are always needing wideouts. If he knocks it out of the park at Pro Day and he's knocked it out in the combine, he'll probably get drafted. Uh, teams always need a third receiver. He could, I mean, he could, he could kind of fall in line with Gabe Davis and Traquan Smith, guys that just hang around in the NFL. That would be the guy I would pick on. I, I you know. Because, again, UCF hasn't had a productive offensive lineman that's made an impact in the NFL in a while, so I can't say any of them. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would say Baker. But, why, Trace, why is this in Frisco, Texas? Do we know? Like, what, What's the story here? Uh, you know that Big 12 wants to do things a little bit differently, and uh, this makes it a bigger made-for-TV event. Plus, you know, we've talked about this. It brings all your scouts to one place, right? They don't have to fan out and – visit all of these college campuses, but it's a little bit of a difference uh, than years previous with pro days on the UCF campus. I think we're people rather be in Orlando, Florida than Frisco, Texas though. No, am I wrong? Just yeah, say. Nonetheless, wish all those former Knights the best uh, during their pro days in Frisco, Texas. We mentioned Terry Mahaja earlier, Orlando Business Journal, first to report UCF with plans now to move forward with its construction uh, design phase completed by the uh, end of September, construction perhaps to begin in December, all of this to be completed, uh, Roth Tower expansion and other upgrades, ELO, by, by the start of the 2026 season, completed by 
we'll see how they stick to that timetable. Elo, you're the AD. Let's throw softball out. I know you want shade over there, but what would be your I want a new priority? Plex trade. No, no, wait. I want a new Plex. We need a renovate. Get more people there, not just shade for the record. Go ahead. Not just shade. What would be your top priority? It seems like they're looking to expand the towers, which, by the way, selfishly, includes additional space for the media. And you've been in that press box. You know that additional space for the media is a top priority, Milo. Um, what would be your top priorities? Oh, man. I know yours is what? Finish the... Uh, lazy River. It begins go. and ends with a lazy river. So I think you have to finish that, right? Isn't that the big thing that's going to get mm -hmm. student-athletes to come here potentially? I mean, we're talking facilities. We're not. We're discounting NIL for the record, correct? We're discounting. Yeah, NIL. just facilities. I would say you got to finish that job. Uh, I don't know, football wise, stadium wise. I think there's some things you could upgrade there. I don't think you could put more cabanas. Could you? I mean, what would you do with the football stadium? I mean, I. Well, that's why real. the talk is of the tower expansion. Yeah, right? I think it's that's the main. More one. bodies in there. Yeah. That has been an area where there's more demand than UCF has capacity, so they're looking to bring yes. in more dollars, Elo. So football, obviously, a couple other things. Baseball, probably expand a press box, please. We could so that way, poor Trace doesn't have to be in the win outside. I think there's they got to do something. To, None of that makes them any money, though. None press of that makes box, no, it doesn't. But I'm just you have, hey, I'm the AD here. I make the decisions here. Let's also, <laughs> are you keeping the plex where it is, or are you moving it somewhere on campus? Whatever's their best option. But we need more people there. You were there Sunday. We got to get more fit more people there and whatever it takes to do it, do it for grand out loud. And I also think we should get a new soccer stadium. I can't see the game from certain aspects of the field. So from an Olympic sport, soccer would be other thing. <laughs> that is true. Remember Terry Modger mentioned that uh, as something he that did. He wanted to see happen. Yeah. All right. Time to bring back in Adam Eaton and uh, time for our silly game. Adam. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, here's the first question. Elo, I'll start with you. I know you may not know this. Elo, you were uh, you were otherwise engaged this evening, but at UCF baseball, Cade Boxrucker almost threw a new a no hitter for UCF tonight. F fell one out short of no hitting the JU Dolphins. UCF baseball wins six nothing. So, Elo, I'll start with you. I know you're a baseball guy. Is a no hitter still a big deal? Do we still celebrate no hitters in baseball? Is that still a thing? Not in Major League Baseball because everybody throws one every other week, every week it seems like in baseball. But that's what have been a big deal at UCF, Adam. They haven't thrown a no hitter there. I want to say since like 08, 09. That's been a long time, uh, especially with that's one something Adam can look up. But I believe Brandon Helwick said it goes back farther than that, Evo. 1973, I believe, was what yeah. Brandon said. Yes. Oh, that's right. Even further. That's right. There was one. I remember when I was a student, there was somebody that was throwing a no hitter. And then I think it was broken up, or maybe it was a combined no-hitter. Nonetheless, yeah, that would have been a big college baseball, big deal. Major League Baseball, not as much anymore. I still think it's a big deal. I think a little less of a big deal, though, is the combined no-hitter in Major League Baseball, where the starter goes five. Oh, yeah, it's become There's common. three other relievers that come in. While interesting and impressive on its own, I'm not sure it is as big a deal as a complete game no-hitter by a starting pitcher. All right, Trace, next one for you. Inspired by a question coming up here in today's Around the Kingdom, is there one UCF sporting event that you did not get a chance to attend that you really wish you would have had a chance to attend? What's one event you were not able to be there and you regret not being there for? Mm. I would say uh, the NIT game against Illinois. I had a work event, so I was out of town. I missed what uh, I think was a pretty special night at the arena. I was there for that game. That was a fun one. I'm going to stay with basketball, but I'm going to go with that NCAA tournament first, second round when we beat VCU and played Duke. I talked to our mutual friend, Brian Murphy, who covered the game at the time, says it's one of the most electric atmospheres that he could ever remember covering sports. And he covered a lot of different sports. I mean, including the bowl games for UCF. That moment when Taco and Zion are opening tip, he says it was game of goosebumps. Uh, that would be a sporting event. I, those two in the VCU win, I wish I was there that weekend. Uh, for basketball. That would be the pick I would go with. Foreshadowing a future segment here on Run the Kingdom. All right, Elo, this one starts with you. Uh, news broke today in the NFL. They are going to adopt a new kickoff model, similar to what you saw in the XFL, where everybody lines up five yards across and the kicker kicks off and the returner has to catch it. Nobody can move until the catch is made. Uh, NFL will adopt this. Elo, do you think college football should follow suit and adopt the new kickoff rules? Oh, good question. 
I guess. I mean, anything that makes the kickoff more interesting, right? That not that the goal of this is you get more returns, right? That Out is the this? goal, yes. They want more returns. Uh, so I'm for that. I'm going to defer to Mr. XFL over here, Trace, who just watched every single minute, every single game of the history of the XFL and lived and died by every possession. So I will defer to you since you're the expert here. Trace. Every version of the XFL. <laughs> it's also for player safety and returns. And there have there's just not a lot of kickoff returns. So I am 100% supportive of them changing it up. And I like the way... They uh, they experimented with it in the XFL. All right. Well, you walked right into my trap, Trace Choco. Here's the last question. I'll start with you. The UFL kicks off this weekend. So give me your prediction, Trace. Who will be holding up the UFL championship trophy at the end of the season? Who you got? A, a three-peat for the Birmingham Stallions who come mm. over from the USFL. It's a popular choice. Elo, uh, I'm, I'm holding you to this one. Who will be holding whatever that trophy is for the UFL the at the teams. end of the year? He can't gonna name go, the eight teams I'm gonna, in the league. No, I'm going to go on a limb and say Orlando has no chance of winning a championship. That's correct. You you are accurate in, in that. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. Uh, is Memphis, are the showboats in the yes, league? Yes, Memphis is still there, yes. I'm going to go contrary and go with Memphis, even though Birmingham is the popular pick of it. Okay, and he's uh, Trace is correct. By the way, if you're a UCF fan, Birmingham's the team you want to root for. Three UCF Knights on that team. Marlon uh, Williams, Cole Schneider, Navelle Clark. There's only two other UCF Knights in the league currently. Jordan McRae is playing, I believe, for the Michigan Panthers. Um, and uh, our old friend Donald Delahay, a.k.a. Destroying, is kicking for the San Antonio Brahmin. So five UCF Knights are, are, are going to be in the league, Trace. I'm sure you'll be watching this weekend and glued as you root for your Birmingham. What are we family. talking about? He's going to travel. He's going to use your sons of UCF live budget to travel and cover the games. I don't know if you're aware of this, Adam. He's conspicuously is, absent this weekend, Elo. Yeah. That's an interesting, interesting point. Is, you there made a prop, there. is there a prop bet on this uh, USFL action? By the way, Elo, mutual friend of ours, Andy Seeley, former UCF football sports information director in the same capacity with the Memphis Showboats. Your pick to win wow. it all. Inside <laughs> info. <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> all right. Thank you, Adam. Elo, we talked a little bit about great moments there in UCF uh, history, but it's been the five-year anniversary. We're going to time fly on UCF versus Duke. Some have said, I think Brian Murphy is one of those that said, even in a loss, the greatest sporting event that he had attended uh, that involved UCF. Elo, where were you when you uh, watched that game? I was home watching this game in, in just an awe. It was an amazing basketball game. I understand. It's a brutal loss. From a UCF standpoint, I get it. But it was just a beautiful basketball game with the storylines. Jim Nance was fantastic in there. Taco, Z you know, Zion, the whole Dawkins, Coach K storyline, whether they can knock off the number one ranked team in the country. This is the most watched nationally, the most watched UCF sporting event ever. More people watch this UCF basketball game than they've watched any UCF football bowl game ever. Obviously, Duke was a big part, but it was it felt bigger than life. The whole nation was watching it. And uh, I know it was painful, but I mean, I was proud of those guys because I, I didn't think they'd give Duke a game. And not only did they give him a game, they nearly beat him. And again, a tip in a way. I think UCF would have been in the Sweet 16 Elite Eight if they win that game. I really do. I remember me and Murph have talked about that since. Uh, what a sporting event. What a bang. I was on a flight and landed back in Orlando in the waning moments of that game. And we were getting up from our seats. I was watching it on my tablet. And then. You know how it ends. And I was just crushed. I just slumped back down in my seat. I could not believe it. I agree with you. Painful, but proud. A proud moment. You mentioned where you think they might have gone. What do you think might have been the long-term ramifications had they won that game? Uh, maybe more dollars coming into the program. Maybe some better recruiting. Would it have accelerated the timeline and the growth of UCF men's basketball? I do. I think Dawkins would have gotten probably more extensions by now. We would never be talking about this show. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think they could have. They were that run was set up to be like FAU was last year. Remember, FAU caught a break against Memphis, where there was a, there should have been a foul called on FAU it was on a turnover, and then you know if they got the ball back, they won by one. If that call goes differently, they're knocked out in the first round. FAU ended up going to the Final Four, and they've cashed in on that. I think if UCF that ball goes in. I remember that draw. They would have played Virginia Tech in the Sweet 16 in D.C. They would have probably beaten them. I, I really do believe they would have beaten them. And then they would have played Michigan State in the Elite Eight. Who knows what would have happened. 
But I think that would have changed the whole complexion of this program. It would have been similar to what we have just seen at FAU. That's why sometimes the ball, the way it bounces, can impact how a program uh, is viewed at years later. Yeah. Painful but memorable. It'd be nice to get back. To it's the a game that it's a high. It's a game that they still show those highlights every year during March Madness. That is the game that everybody remembers, and I think UCF fans even remember that game more than the VCU game. This is true. Yeah, I think that VCU game, while important, gets lost uh, as a result of that Duke loss. People don't talk about that game, uh, but a top game in UCF men's basketball history. Though. Correct, but of course. That was a tip-in from the Sweet 16. Maybe that gets more resources, more budgets for the basketball program with that success. Just like this year, if you notice, the Sweet 16 is out, folks. A little chalky this year than normal. Three Big 12 teams in the Sweet 16. A lot of money being spent, ladies and gentlemen. Houston making spending over $10 million, nearly $10 million, according to Mark Adams of ESPN uh, Records there. Duke is the most spent at $28 million. San Diego State the least at 7.2. Arizona, Big 12 opponent school, 12.2 million uh, being spent there. Trace, I guess resources do matter, as someone once wrote on a column. Just <laughs> you're going you're gonna to keep bringing that column up, aren't you? But it does point to resources mattering, right? They matter. They directly impact uh, these teams advancing to the to the Sweet 16. And while an FAU is a great story, hey, they didn't return to the Sweet 16. And and you think about what is reported to be UCF's budget in the low single digits, almost half of what San Diego State at 7.2 million. Uh, I, I I do think it points to the more money invested in basketball program. Uh, the greater opportunity you have at results. And, and that's just the way this is in the NCAA. And that's money that's not including NIL money, by the way. So you're now you're throwing that to the equation, which I think gives the power programs a bigger advantage over the mid-majors and small. I think the gap will continue to grow. And as someone told me when UCF got to the Big 12, you're in a money league now, which means you're in a league where schools will spend money. This ain't the American where you could count on East Carolina not to spend a dime. Uh, if you want to keep up with the Joneses, as they say, in all sports, I think this is the new landscape uh, that you want to compete in. So. Arizona coming into the league, $12.2 million, And Iowa State, $15.2 million on men's basketball, Elo. So. You can get some charter flights with that, right, Cunha? But a couple of big dollar donors being reported by the kingdom. So maybe it's it's hey, that's a positive up. sign. It's a positive sign. Boy, you were wrong on that uh, prop bet that you threw at me last week. Uh, it was the uh, – you thought that softball would average – what th their highest game would be an announced attendance of some 1,300. Correct. Elo, all about the same crowd, uh, 665 on Friday, 671 Saturday, 659 Sunday. Uh, great turnout, good atmosphere. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about softball in a moment, but uh, – uh, not quite the crowd that you thought it would be. I call Do foul. They count everybody in the outfield. No, I think you. I, 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 you were there, son. I think you were up to something. You talked to somebody to undercount this. You didn't. I don't think they counted the outfield. I think you wanted to win this prop. I think you were still mad about the basketball attendance. You still hold a grudge of years ago when I won the stats co fantasy competition and you accused I, me. I of will admit to you, Elo, I'm still bent about Jamil Reynolds two free yes. throws. <laughs> I know you are. That way. I think this was your way of getting back. No, there was way more people than uh, the number they put out there. I don't know what happened. Clearly, we can't count worth uh, anything. But no, no, I, I, I call foul. But you know. You do win the bet. So we got one this week, or you haven't come Yes, up I do. I will give you one, and I'm not going to use attendance anymore because I can't trust them. All right. Give me the UCF hitter this weekend against Texas Tech, who gets the most base hits in the series. Mm. Andrew Sundin. That's your pick. That's my pick. Yours? I'm going to go Prevesk. Either way. Yep. Got to got to got to win the series, and they're going to need both of those guys to have a good series. Halo. That is correct. Uh, that is correct on that. And of course, speaking of baseball, you see what I did there, Trace. It's a segue to baseball. They uh, coming off a Adam Eaton first reported here on Around the Kingdom, a near no hitter against Jacksonville. Uh, they of course won two out of three against Kansas in Lawrence. We need the doubleheader on Saturday. They get set for Texas Tech 
this uh, week, Thursday to Saturday. Uh, Trace, are you a believer in Rich Wallace and the Knights baseball team here? Week to week on Around the Kingdom and on Suns UCF Live, I've been skeptical, but I'm starting to come around. I, I, I was really skeptical when they got blasted Friday night, very cold weekend series. Threat of rain on Sunday made it a doubleheader on Saturday. You know how hard it is to win a doubleheader. And UCF got great pitching performances and swept the doubleheader on Saturday, Lawrence. Win another series, Elo. Four and five in the Big 12, top 10 RPI for UCF baseball. Projected 10th in the Big 12. I'm coming around to them. I like what I see from the pitchers, pitching staff. And uh, as Adam mentioned off the top, Cade. Box Rucker, great baseball name. One out away from a no-hitter, throws a one-hitter, uh, and UCF gets the midweek win at Jacksonville, 16-6 and six now. I like where they're heading. I'm a, I, I'm a believer, too. I think Rich has got putting the pieces in the right place. You know, they changed. They had 23 new faces, Trey, 17 transferred. But what I like what they've done is they've gotten guys from winning programs. You know, like Ziska was a transfer from Notre Dame. That was in the College World Series. He's got guys, baseball guys, that fit the pieces, it seems like. Now, who knows how long this will last. The Big 12 is a top three league. It's going to get tougher as things go. But, but, if you can just win series, you know, half your series in the Big 12, that's probably good enough to make a regional, which this program hasn't done since 2017. I think that's a very positive development for baseball. Yeah, top three league in baseball, switching to softball. You know this very well. Also, one of the top leagues is the Big 12, and the Knights ran into a buzzsaw again now with number two, Texas at home, swept. But the pitching was there, Elo, if the bats could have only done a little bit more. Well, that's been the story. Their offense has been scuffling, partly because you're facing great pitching. I mean, they faced twice this weekend with Texas, maybe the national freshman of the year content uh, leader in the clubhouse. And Tegan Kavan, who closed the game out on Sunday, got the shutout on Friday. They faced Lexi Kilfoyle from Oklahoma State the weekend before. She's the front runner for the Big 12 Pitcher of the Year. It's a little harder in the Big 12. Number two conference. UCF has the seventh strongest schedule right now, and I think you're, you're seeing it. And it's affected their offense. I think they're pressing a little bit. Trace, you were there. I'm going to give you full 100% credit for this because you had a great line to describe things, and it is the game of margin. So I'm going to give you the – the platform, because I'm going to give you props. You you had a great line to describe right now what's going on that team uh, so far. Yeah, you know, uh, Texas beat Florida State earlier in the week, 10 nothing. Run ruled them, right? Uh, didn't that happen? Run rule. And UCF, it's just, it's little plays. You saw the, the replay review at home plate. It's oh. little moments during the game. Again, that's not making up for the bats and, and, and some struggles there. But it's just little moments of the difference in a game, three to one. Uh, kind of game, and uh, they were right there with the number two team in the country, who yeah. I do believe is generally the second best team in the country behind Oklahoma. They hit the road, Texas Tech. Big we said series. earlier about baseball win series come and out and of that's, Lubbock. Yes, winning yes. series. And this is not the time to like throw the the things that you know be negative on the team. I get it. Nobody's happy. You know this, Trace. We were there Sunday. The, the team not happy where they're at. They're not happy. But, but give them a chance. The, the beauty of the Big 12 is you could get right back into things. Texas Tech and this on the road this weekend host BYU, both top 50 teams. Texas Tech in the top 30, BYU in the Every top 50. Every team is a top 50 team. It's, it's a tough league. Hey, Kansas is a lot better than people expected them to be in the right. night show. They took two out of three at home, really could have won all three. They lost one nothing on the Sunday. Win series, Elo. Bring back in Adam Eaton. What did we get right? What did we get wrong? Uh, all right, let's start with this. We, we talked about basketball really quickly. News that also broke tonight uh, in the transfer portal. UCF uh, former players Marcellus Avery, Damar Langford, and Michael Kalina have all put their names into the transfer portal. Avery and Langford obviously were rotation players for UCF, so we'll see how much that impacts uh, basketball for next season. A lot of talk about the Big 12 Pro Day. Trace, you said this is happening at Jerry's World. You are incorrect. This is taking place at the Ford Center, which is known as the Star, which is where the Cowboys have their practices, Trace. Uh, it's the Wrong. home of the Dallas Cowboys. And you wonder why it's there. We had Pro Day, obviously, at the Star. You had Media Day at, at Jerry's World, so there's probably a, a Texas connection there. And while, yes, I recognize that some of these names may not be long for the NFL, 
I can confirm UFL and CFL scouts will be on uh, on on the grounds, Trey. So perhaps mm. maybe a night or two will line, uh, line up in your vaunted UFL league. All right, we were talking basketball. People forget about UCF VCU. That was a 73-58 win, by the way for UCF over VCU in round one there. Round two, obviously UCF losing 77-76. I will never forget the missed, call, missed foul call on Colin Smith, who was hook and held by Jane Delorier on the putback by R.J. Barrett, a, a, a point of contention for a lot of UCF fans that should have been a foul call that would have negated uh, that bucket by R.J. Barrett and put Aubrey Dawkins in the situation where he didn't have to miss a tip in. But he played great, by the way, 32 points for Aubrey Dawkins in that game, gentlemen. Mm. A lot of memories of that one. Thank you, Adam. One more thing before we go. A court used by UCF men's basketball has a new home at the headquarters of Rockham Sox, the company founded by Rob Starkman, a former team manager for UCF. Oh, well played, Rob. Well played. All right. Look for new episodes midweek every week on the Sons of UCF YouTube channel. We also drop this show in the audio content wherever you get your downloadable content. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Eric Lopez. I'm Trey Strolko. Thanks, everyone, for joining us this week for Around the Kingdom.